Hello, Ricky Tang here, and you find me outside Fraser's Motorcycles of Gloucester. And I'm going to take the new Suzuki GSX-S 1000 GX out for a spin. I'm going to give you a first impression right now, because I've literally been riding for about half of a mile. The bike feels lower down, more road bike-like than I expected, considering the styling of the bike. I don't feel high up at all. In fact, um, the riding position, you, you might possibly expect it to be almost a bit dirt bike biased, but I've got a bit of a lean on to the, uh, to the handlebars, a slight lean, but it's not dirt bike upright at all. Now I am on drive mode A. With drive mode A, that is the sharpest throttle response don't know yet if it's too sharp, but it's pretty sharp. What you can feel is when you first twist the throttle open, there's quite a, quite a strong initial response from the throttle, from the bike, and it peters out slightly. Not in a weak way, it just doesn't quite maintain that initial thrust. But it picks up speed bloody quickly. <laughs> However, as you might be able to tell, because I'm shouting, wind noise is a massive problem right now. However, as you might be able to tell, because I'm shouting, wind noise is a massive problem right now. At about 70 miles an hour, it's very, very noisy. The screen is adjustable, but unfortunately you need tools to do it. And ain't nobody got time for that. Or at least I haven't today. Now just to put you in the loop, today I have ridden a BMW F900GS and a BMW F800GS. This is the third bike I've tested today. I'll tell you what though, something that feels rather magical is the uh, suspension quality <laughs> now that's no surprise because um, Suzuki's put a lot of effort into this kind of first generation semi-active suspension of theirs and going over the bumps then was quite quite something uh, me and James at, uh, at the bike shop was having a little bit of a uh, chin scratch about the suspension settings on the right here on the dash we do think the settings are soft medium and hard <laughs> for the suspension for the automatic damping oh yeah I do I do feel maybe like I'm floating a bit more now in this mood I'm gonna actually uh, put it onto hard to see if I can tell the difference. Yes, <laughs> immediately the damping's firmed up. I feel more, oh yeah, the rear especially. But what we have got still is a quite a comfortable rider seat. There's a, a fair bit of give in that seat. Let's go back down to soft again. Yeah, it does feel a little bit now I'm kind of riding on candy floss. <laughs> wow, yeah, this is really soaking up the bumps and these uh, speed humps. Now, Suzuki did get a bit of a bit of a ribbon a few years ago for their throttle response at low revs. The GSX 1000 uh, F and S come to mind. This is much, much better much nicer coming on off of, on and off the throttle it's making it a very pleasant thing to ride in this slow traffic nice to see uh, cruise control on this bike not so nice to see that you have to activate cruise control on the right switch gear not the left but it's there could be worse it's got some other other clever stuff going on in, in as much as 
if it detects a bike getting into a bit of a weave at speed, it will uh, reduce power. Try and make sure things don't get out of hand. Which is nice. But it does beg the question, why build a bike that weaves? Nice to be back on the full cylinder bike. Up until today, well, the only bike I've ridden for the previous six months is my KTM 390 Adventure. <laughs> then I've had these uh, pair of GSs today. And this bike. Yeah, we got a very pokey engine here at uh, at road speeds. Up and down quick shifter as well. I think I do need to get another ride on a BMW S1000XR just to understand where this bike stands in relation to that, which is its biggest competition to be fair. Uh, it's been a while since I've ridden one. That also has semi-active suspension, but not to the, um, the technical level that this bike's got it. So I'd be interested to know if this bike's got uh, one over the BMW in that respect. So I'm trying to hold uh, 5,000 RPM or so, looking for a spot to maybe do an overtake. And uh, vibration report, a little bit through the handlebars, but not a lot. A little bit through the pegs, but also not a lot. Open the throttle. Oh, the camera's moved. Hello. Still recording? I think so. That was interesting. Managed to get a, a bit of speed up at an angle. And uh, the front end kind of kicked around a little bit as I was going round the corner. I need another bend to see if I can understand that a bit better. I wonder if we've got a steering damper on this bike or not. BMW seem to throw steering dampers at bikes like they're going out of fashion. There was a steering damper on the 900 GS, <laughs> for example. No heated grips. It's nice to see that you've actually got hand guards here. So that's, you know, that was part of the reason why I kind of felt this was like a tall rounder adventure styled bike, when in fact it doesn't feel quite adventure like when you sit on it. But you have got hand guards, which is very, very nice to have but no heated grips, I do believe they're an option though. But again, I think I had this preconceived idea about what this bike was going to be. And I thought it was going to be a bit more um, spread out on the bike. Legs or feet a bit further away from my bottom. Hands a bit higher than they actually are. In fact, if you look at these bars, they kind of, um, if you can, in one picture, if you can get it all, you see they, um, kind of bend downwards not bend upwards and outwards like a off-road bike so certainly not the tall rounder I was thinking it was going to be by contrast I'm pretty sure that the the handlebars on the BMW S1000XR are both higher and wider than, than this machine Well, it doesn't mess about <laughs> picking up speed. It is a descendant of a GSXR after all. But um, as I was going down that dual carriageway, I crossed the white lines. And there was a ridge between them as well. And the bike didn't enjoy that very much. It kind of gave me a little bit of a, a shimmy over the, the white lines and, and the ridge in the middle of the road. It does make me think that this bike might benefit with the performance on tap um, from a steering damper. I'm going to have to have a look. I'll try not to forget. <laughs> We're about to uh, stop for fuel. Right, any sign of a steering damper? Might not be able to see anything down here. But, uh, no, but I do feel that the bike might benefit from 
a steering damper, you know. I haven't owned a, a big engine bike since I uh, lost my BMW R1250R last August. I think I'm just realising how much I miss a powerful engine. Yeah, gathering speed on this thing <laughs> is child's play. So easy. Gotta have your wits about you. Ah, right, let's see. Well, I do believe I made the bike slow me down. <laughs> there was a few weaves and wobbles there while I was uh, going a bit quicker. And basically it felt like the bike was running out of fuel. The power was being cut for certain. So it does seem like this bike likes to get a weave on. And Suzuki's had to uh, try and mitigate that through the ECU, essentially. Yeah, so uh, through a little bit of more testing, which I probably can't show you, uh, if you do get the bike into a little bit of a weave, it won't intervene necessarily, depends on how big the weave is. Smaller weaves at speed, it'll tolerate and it'll just let it weave, as long as it doesn't get any worse. But with bigger wheels at speed, and if you've got the throttle on still, then you do feel the bike slowing down. Then you do feel the acceleration being cut. Ah, right. We've also got lift control. <laughs> because uh, I was accelerating in first gear, and it was not letting me lift the front. And I saw LF flash on the uh, screen there. I'm sure I could uh, make it do something naughty if I press the right buttons. Who are misses? If going fast down back roads is your thing, with uh, extra excitement from a less than perfectly stable motorbike underneath you, then uh, this feels like a willing partner. <laughs> oh, it's so quiet down here. <laughs> quiet as a mouse, oh God. It's a bit like that scene from The Matrix, the last of the older ones, where Trinity and Neo go up above the clouds from the battle, and then they enter this just peaceful, beautiful space, and then they fall back through the clouds into hell. It's a bit like that when I do this. <laughs> but the screen is adjustable and replaceable. So um, hopefully, a problem that can be fixed. In terms of vibration, after about one and a half hours in on the bike, um, everything's fine, except my rightmost little finger and the one next to it. So I've got a name, ring finger, but right ring finger. Uh, the little finger's kind of gone numb, the finger next to it's going numb, but other than that, the rest of me is doing okay. <laughs> In terms of fuel economy, we're at 40 miles per gallon, which is not brilliant, but not too bad. I have been opening up the throttle a fair bit. And I think I need to summarize this uh, right now because I've run out of memory card, I think, on that camera and it's turned itself off. I've got a backup microphone inside my crash helmet. The battery's run out on that. <laughs> So the GoPro on my crash helmet is the only thing I've got left. So I better sum up quick. Pros. The engine is an absolute peach. I love it. It's got power everywhere. It's not the fastest full cylinder around, but it doesn't need to be. It is fast enough for the road. It's very fast. It's very, very fast. <laughs> Nothing to complain about really on the engine front. The suspension here, the damping, has been a revelation. That's, that's a surprise. That's really impressive. From that point of view, Suzuki's done an excellent job. 
the ergonomics I like although like I say not as um, off-road bias as I was expecting it does feel like a road bike it's slightly taller one absolutely fine nothing to complain about stop looking at that camera no point it stopped overall a nice bike to ride that is until you get to maybe seven tenths and, and higher so when you're pushing on especially if you're going around bends there seems to be a bit of a stability issue that i think perhaps a, a steering damper would go a long way to uh solving but what do i know i'm not suzuki <laughs> i'm just me with my opinions but it does seem to uh, be rather easy to provoke into a weave especially when pushing on performance riding and the windscreen well don't think i need to say any more about that <laughs> so there's a lot of things that suzuki are doing right with this bike but in my opinion there's a, a couple of flaws that need sorting out oh clutch in terms of uh my ranking system that I invented on the fly earlier today if 10 out of 10 means the clutch needs a lot of effort 1 out of 10 means it needs hardly any effort to activate the clutch or use the clutch uh, I'd call that a 5 out of 10 maybe maybe 5.5 <laughs> it's a bit springy it does take a bit of effort it's, it's not a light clutch but on the other hand, I don't think it will cause you too much trouble unless you had small hands or not very strong hands. So yeah, I think this camera is going to probably pack up soon. So I'm going to say goodbye. I'll see you down there in the comments. Tell me what you think about this bike and inline fours in general. Because uh, they seem to be kind of uh, under attack somewhat <laughs> from triples and twins of various configurations. Anyway, stop babbling. See you in the comments. Take care of yourselves, folks. Ta-da!